Hi everyone. Okay, let's try this again this week and see how we go. So first up, uh, once you get into the room and the chat, let me know if you can hear me properly because I've had a bit of a change with my setup. So I'm not sure if the microphone's picking up as clearly as it used to. Um, also, let me know when you're here. Uh, last week it was a bit of an issue because there wasn't a lot of people. In fact, there was only one person turned up for the live, so which makes it a bit of a problem for both me and the single person that turns up. It puts a bit of a burden on them. So uh, let me know when you get here and uh, we'll take it from there. I'm just going to flick away for a second so that I can get my notes. Hang on. There we go. I do love having a double monitor. It's very useful. Um, I didn't think I'd ever use a second monitor very much, but uh, when I got the monitor within uh, six weeks or so, I had to uh, unconnect the second monitor for a while, just while I was working on some sort of logistics or something, and found that I missed it terribly. I must have been using it uh, for so many different things that I hadn't been aware of. Uh, that second monitor really comes in useful. So... Um, Anyway, as I said, let me know when you get here so that uh, I'm not talking to myself like I was, well, not quite talking to myself last week, but very close to it, uh, which puts the burden on the one person in the room to, to keep conversing with me, which isn't fair to you guys either. So uh, just say hello when you get into the room so that I know that you're there. Anyway, um, one of the things that I wanted to ask about, um, I'll keep repeating this uh, throughout uh, the chat while I'm here, um, and uh, that is, do you think it might be better if I just go uh, every two weeks or something like that? Um, okay, I can, oh, there we are. We've got someone I was just about to ask. <laughs> Um, if we're having a problem with the comments, but uh, Jomi just turned up. Hello, Jomi. Hi. Nice to see you here. Um, and Audrey, hi. Okay, great. 20 minutes is 20 minutes. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, it's actually nice to have just more than the one person turn up. <laughs> then it's not just me talking to one person who feels obliged to talk back and feel really awkward about it. So that's a really good thing. Anyway, as I was saying, one of the questions I'll keep asking throughout this session is um, because there was only one person turned up yes, uh, last week, would it be more useful to you if we uh, cut this back to once every two weeks? Is every week too much? Uh, do you want to keep doing the every week? Let me know in comments what you think and I'll keep checking on this one as people turn up um, and plug in, log into the chat. Anyway, uh, news, which I never got around to talk about last week. Um, it was just, there was just the one person turned up and that was it. You may have noticed <laughs> I cut my hair <laughs> and because I cut my hair, it's kind of like bounced up and I'll show you the back. Look, it's really, see? I took there. I took um, probably 12 inches off the bottom, which is a lot of the old red stuff has gone now. So I, I'm pretty much back to to my natural color, particularly from the front. So, um, but the thing that that's really shocking for me is how light it is. It feels like the first week I had to go around and keep touching my hair because I felt like it wasn't there anymore and I keep having to check the back because even though it's still down to my waist it's that's a lot shorter than it used to be I used to be able to sit on my hair so it's uh it's quite a change hi Heather hello thank you thank you very much I was just talking about that it's uh it's a bit of a shocker to me I'm still getting used to it so and of course now that the the weight isn't there it's just gone so Hi, Karen. Hello. Glad to see everyone here. Um, repeat question for those of you that have been here for a, a bit. Um, because of last week, because there was a, only one person was able to make it, 
would it be more useful if we drop back to once every two weeks for these chats? Let me know in comments what your feelings are um, because I don't want to put like onus on you guys. A lot of you feel like you really need to <laughs> turn up, which is great. I love it. Um, it's absolutely t horrible talking to an empty room. Um, so I appreciate you guys turning up every week. It's, it's great. Um, but if you're finding that too much of an issue, let me know um, in comments. Or if you have some other idea of, of what would suit you better, let me know in comments again. And um, I will collate all that stuff. And we have a newcomer in the room, Marsha Butkin, Buck-Tin. Morning, Marsha. If it's morning for you, you must be in Australia, I'm presuming. East Coast, West Coast, let, it, let us know and say hello. Um, anyway, so back to the news. And um, as you can probably tell too, there's been a bit of a change with my desk. One of my Christmas presents was a monitor stand to lift my monitors up, which lets me stand. I also have a very high chair. Hang on. Oh, which it's, as you can tell from its height compared to me, it's a drafting stool. So I can actually, because one of the things when I first tried uh, standing to, to write, one of the things I found was as soon as I got tired, I found excuses to not write anymore, which is a bad, bad thing. I need to keep writing. Um, anyway, so my solution was is to have the standing desk um, and have the drafting stool there so that I can sit down to write when I need to. And at the moment I'm standing and it doesn't make any difference if I'm standing or sitting. I don't have to keep rising and, and lowering the desk, which is really useful. So uh, let me see. Jomi, yes, 506 there too. Uh, Heather, once a fortnight would be better, I think. Save on. Okay, Heather, thanks. Audrey, every two weeks would be fine. Okay. Um, all right, so keep those comments going and I'll keep up with my news for a minute. Um, weather. <laughs> I, I know weather's just a, a gossip passing time of day kind of thing, except that it was 30 below here on the weekend and it's 30 below right now, as you can probably tell from the sweater and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of cool in my basement. Um, it was so cold on the weekend that uh, Mark, when he went to work, went to go to work this morning, uh, couldn't get the car started because the engine block had frozen. <laughs> And he had forgotten to put the engine block heater on. So uh, he only went to work about an hour ago. He's very much behind now. But uh, tell me what the weather's like where you are. I'm just curious because there's this like big freeze that's happening all over North America. Um, and I know some people have got um, horrendous temperatures at the moment. Marsha, Perth, Western Australia. My hometown, yay! Go Dockers. <laughs> um, what else is there? Oh, yes, and of course, 30 below. Um, that's 30 below is basically, it doesn't matter if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's pretty much the same either way. Uh, 30 below is very cold. And, of course, I don't know about you guys, but uh, because we get the, the cooler weather in winter, um, particularly around the Christmas period, we use our garage to store a lot of food and stuff because of the overflow from the fridge with all the excess food and stuff for Christmas. Um, and we had forgotten uh, that there was a carton of cans of tonic water out in the garage. And we're sitting upstairs, staying nice and warm um, yesterday. And there was this explosion out in the garage, went out and found that... Uh, cans in this carton of tonic water had exploded and no kidding it was everywhere you should have seen this stuff I didn't think cans could explode but the lids came off it was amazing and thank god it was tonic water and not Pepsi or we will be cleaning that stuff up for months um but it was wow <laughs> it was it was really interesting to see a can explode never seen that before um, K 
Karen, yes. Uh, I only lasted about 15 minutes last week, so you would have been, I would have finished the broadcast before you got there. Sorry about that. Um, with only the one person there, it's it makes it too much of a burden for the one person in the room to keep talking to me. And uh, so I, I cut it short and said I'd try again this week, which is, again, I don't know if you missed it or not, let me know if you think that cutting back to every two weeks instead of every week for these chats would work for you guys. Um, if that makes it easier for you, uh, these are supposed to be fun for you. And, and uh, if you're finding you're stressing out trying to get here, then that's not a good thing. So let me know what you think. Okay, more news um, from last week. Uh, I didn't get to actually talk about this. I don't think I may have. Hunting the Cobra hit uh, number 69 on the espionage thriller hot new releases list. So it's in the top 100, which is just completely amazing. It's um, the it's not a romance list. It's the espionage thriller list. So I'm up there with um, Tim Tigner and people like that, which is <laughs> really, really interesting. And, and, and just I took lots of screenshots and I'll send an email out to uh, everyone with those screenshots in it. But that was quite the coup for me. I actually ranked on a list that is not romance. So and more news, particularly from this week. Actually, this news is so fresh that I uh, that I don't think anyone has heard. Um, oh, Heather, thank you. Heather said, "Brilliant read for hunting the cobra." Uh, cobra. Thank you. I'm I'm getting some nice feedback actually for that one. News from this week, and it's so fresh, nobody's heard it. And when I put this link up in a second, it'll be the first time anyone's seen it and can click through to it. But I finished um, more time kissed moments on Saturday and Da, who's off to a flying start this year, has already done the cover. So I was working until like 30 seconds before I hopped onto this Facebook live to get um, more time kissed moments up onto all the bookseller sites. It's up everywhere except mine at the moment, but I do have a website page and it does have an excerpt and a description. So just hang on a second. I'll grab the link and put it in comments. And you should see that pop up in because it delays for 30 seconds, just like I do. So you should see that as I speak about it. Um, Audrey says, yes, great book. Thank you very much. That's Hunting the Cobra. Cobra. I keep tripping over that. It's amazing. Um, Karen, enjoying the Sherlock's. Good. It's. Um, I don't sell a lot of the Sherlock Holmes books, but the people that buy them do seem to really enjoy them. They're, I, um, I tried very hard to make them sound like the authentic stories, which I think I did not, not so shabbily. So anyway, the link for more time kiss moments is in comments. Um, if you're on a cell phone, it's probably not worth trying to jump over and have a look. You may get kicked out of this video, but if you've got multi tabs available, you could maybe go over and have a quick look and tell me what you think. And as I said, that is just up, like literally it's five minutes old. There's steam rising off it still. So <laughs> very, very new. And does anyone else have any really great news? Share. This is, this is a discussion, not not me standing and talking at people so um okay one of the things that we were going to going to talk about now uh just before i get into it um third repeat or fourth repeat sorry um for those of you that have been here for a bit um let me know if you would prefer to go back to uh, move back to every two weeks for these live chats uh, last week there was only one person able to turn up and I had a lot of stressed out emails from people saying I'm so sorry I didn't make it because of one reason or another and that's not the point it's not like I'm, you're supposed to be getting fun out of these too so let me know in comments if you think that two weeks would work work better for you or in people in the UK in your case once every fortnight um, which is not a word gets used in North America very often but uh, let me know if that would suit you better. 
we can chop back to once every two weeks if that is the majority opinion. So let me know in comments. Okay, we were going to talk about ways to whittle down your to be read pile. Uh, hands up in comments if you got books given to you for Christmas. I kind of, <laughs> um, I did, my, my books weren't actually under the Christmas tree, but I ended up, my mum bought me a ton of books while she was here before she went back, which is kind of hilarious because I ended up putting a lot of electronic books on her tablet before she went back so she could read them on the flight back to Australia. Um, so yeah, one of the things that you usually find at this time of year is that you have an absolutely maxed out to be red pile. And a lot of the times that's can be bad. I mean, in the old days when everyone was using print books and were collecting print books, it's very easy to see what books you've got. And if the pile gets really, really big, then you tend to self-regulate and stop buying books. But when you've got an electronic reader, the more books you buy, the more they just drop down underneath the horizon and you can't see what you've got. And I don't know about you, but I have at times gone into my the bottom of my electronic reader. I actually use Google Play books, but I've gone into the bottom of that and just been shocked because there's books in there I don't even remember buying, let alone starting to read or anything like that. I've never cracked them open or anything. That's just it's a real shock to the system. So there are Let's have a quick look now. Um, you tell me, can, do you feel any pressure to, to whittle down your to be read pile or are you quite happy just buying books as you go along and just reading the ones that are at the top of your reader when you get there? Is, does that work for you? Or do you have a way of dealing with books in your to be read pile that tends to cut them down quickly and you get through them and you don't have a lot there. I'd be If you're one of those readers, I'd love to know how you do that because mine is horrendous. Mine scares me every time I go in there. Um, but, okay, so here's the thing. You bought the books, books for a reason, right? I mean, there's something, some reason there why you bought the book. So theoretically, if it's in your reader, you want to read it. So why wouldn't you? I mean, one of the reasons to go back into your to be read pile is so that you can cut down, you can actually access all those books that you wanted to read in the first place. And um, then I don't know. Okay, here's another hands up. Is anyone watching the, um, what's what's her name? Uh, Marie Kondo, the, the cleaning expert from Japan. Everyone, anyone watching that series on Netflix? I've had so many people telling me about that series or that book. Um, and I've already, <laughs> I've sort of decided I'm not going to go near it because I'll just, I'll get guilted into doing all sorts of things. But if you're following the Marie Kondo method um, of decluttering everything, then sooner or later you're going to hit your e-reader and know that you have to declutter all the books in there. So I don't know about you, but I'm not going to delete my books. Um, Audrey, no, she is evil. <laughs> she, Marie Kondo always makes me feel terribly guilty. So I just, I don't listen. I don't watch. Um, I just nod when people talk about her. <laughs> so, and Audrey has a to be read folder on her Kindle, about 85 books in there. Whew, wow. Um, usually read in series or all of a particular author. Okay, that's one way to do it. And we've got a visitor. Come here come and say hello to all these people oh, there look see up there what's that up there this is strider he's mad as a cut snake he uh you're crazy aren't you hmm? he's gone i don't know why i'm here okay we're gonna put you down again he's uh he likes to lie on plastic he thinks he's a dog he pants, he sits up like a prairie dog on his hind legs for any reason, um, and he purrs like a train in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, 
Karen, hundreds on my Kindle. Yes, me too. Janita, hi. Thank you. You made it. So, and Kathy, hi, Kathy. I think that's the first time I've seen a comment from you too. Saw a couple of episodes of decluttering my clothes closet, not my books ever. Yes, that's sort of my feeling too. And, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, Karen, oh, and Kathy, pretty kitty. Yes, also took completely mad. Um, Janita, what a big beautiful cat. Yes, he and but he wriggles a bit if he can't get down and move. He likes to, to prance around a lot. Very energetic. Also, like I said, completely crazy. Um, the other reason to go through your to be read pile is that it's a way of finding new to you read uh, authors because um, there's books in there you, you probably bought because it looked interesting and you thought you'd try it out. Um, but of course they slip below the horizon you never see them again because you're reading some other author at the moment or another series at the moment so um i'm quite sure if you go through your to be read pile you'll find that there are books in there from authors that you don't know so that's a good chance of finding new authors um nicole rhodes hi yes hello welcome glad to see you here um we're just talking about to be read piles. You might want to scroll back through comments and sort of catch up there a bit too. Uh, okay. Two other reasons to get through your to be read pile. And sorry, I've got, now I've got strata hair everywhere. <laughs> um, to be read pile. Uh, two more reasons. One saves money. So if you're really short on cash, there's the perfect reason to go through your to be red pile because you've already paid for all of those. And the other one is, um, of course, most of the readers these days will let you share the book with a friend. So you can email it to them. And one of the things that I did find out, there is a limitation on that, because um, Dina, one of the street team members, tried to share a book with me. The problem is, is you can only share with people that are in this that use the same store as you so if you use amazon.com and they use amazon.com then you can share your book with them and they they just once they're finished with it they send it back to you and you can't read it while they're reading it it's literally like lending a book um but there is that limitation between the countries and stuff like that so there's quite a few good reasons for getting down through your to be read pile and uh, there's all sorts of ways to, to work it so that you can get through it. Hello, Beth. Beth just turned up. Um, Heather just had a look at the new book. Looks great. Thank you. I had a lot of fun writing this one. And of course, it's, you know, my favorite series. So it, it kind of got cranked out. Mum went back on the 17th. I started working on the 18th of January and I finished on Saturday. So that's kind of like two weeks. <laughs> to uh, completely plot and write the book. So yeah, that one kind of went <laughs> it, it was good fun. And also, as I mentioned, and as you can probably tell by the excerpt for that one, it's all about Raphael. So now um, let's start off with the, the first four reasons. Hang on, I'm just going to scroll my notes up. First four reasons. Okay. The first four methods for getting through your to be read pile. One, read everywhere. Like um, if you can read on your phone uh, and most of the reading devices have got an app that you can download and install on your phone and it synchronizes with your reader or your reading app on other devices. Now, if you, you can just decide, okay, for the month of February or March or for this quarter or until summer, you're going to go on a reading binge and you read everywhere, reading cues, read at traffic lights, read when nobody's talking to you, read during the ad breaks on TV. Um, just you get into the swing of it eventually. But for the first few days, you have to very consciously carry your phone with you everywhere and determine that you're going to switch it on and read whenever you get even 30 seconds. Um, so and that way you can start cranking through the to be read pile. And um, which just killed my number two because it's read on your cell phone. Uh, and those two things combined, reading on your cell phone and reading everywhere, will dramatically cut down your pile. 
Um, what you can do is uh, sort your books alphabetically, either by author or by title, and then you have to start at the top. You make a deal with yourself. You're going to start at the top and work your way down, and uh, that way you get no choice over whether you want to read it or not or whether you feel like reading it or not. You have to crack the spine on that book and you have to try reading it. So it's sort of a way of gamifying the, the to-be-read pile. So, and um, the other, another way to do it is um, read the unknowns first. So if there's a title there you're not sure about, if there's an author there you've never heard of, read those. Try reading those too. And one of the things that I quite often do, um, I don't, I don't make myself finish every book, but I do have a cutoff point. So it could be 20% or 30%. Personally, I hang in there for about 50 pages. And if by 50 pages, I'm ready to toss the thing against the wall, then I'm allowed to put it aside or delete it off my device. Um, but I do put that sort of rule in place because if you're in a hurry and you're trying to get rid of books quickly, you find that you don't get give books the same fair go as you would if you were not feeling pressure to get books read. So if you have that artificial, okay, I can't stop reading until the 25% mark or something like that, um, and you can make it whatever you want. But that makes you give it a fair chance before you decide that the book is beyond redemption and, and you toss it. Um, there's lots of other ways of gamifying it. Uh, Audrey, bye. And Mary's just walked in the door. <laughs> Hi. Uh, for those of you that are new, let me repeat the question of the day. Uh, because last week we only had one person able to make it live, which made it really difficult for that person because they had to maintain an entire conversation with me, um, I thought I would ask, would it be easier if we cut these Facebook live sessions back to every two weeks instead of every week? Because it's supposed to be fun for you too. So if you're finding it a real strain and there's pressure on you to get to these things, then that's beside the point, isn't it? It's really not good. So let me know in comments what you think and I'll collect the, collate the answers and figure it out from there. So um, back to gamifying how to get through your to be read pile. Um, here's another way to do it. Take the book that you least want to read and read that first. And if you combine that with, okay, I can't quit until I hit like 15% or 20% or something like that, um, that'll get you through a lot of books quickly and get them off your to be read pile. Uh, you can also do the, the slamming session uh, where you go through, you give yourself five minutes to read and delete as many books as you can. And it could be that you just open the book and read the description and go, oh yes, I remember that one. No, not now. And you shut it up and delete it off the reader. Um, this is presuming that you have some sort of cloud backup for your books. Um, if you're using an Amazon Kindle, all your books are kept on your Amazon account. So you can delete off your reader and still be able to retrieve them later. And that's something else. You might want to go into your Amazon account and look at your electronic uh, content and see if there's any books hidden there that are not on your reader because they can disappear. So that's another thing too. Um, the other thing is, is you can make a rule for yourself. If you buy a new book, you have to delete one, an, an old one. So you can say, okay, I'm only ever going to have a hundred books or 50 books on the reader at any one time. And if you bring one in, you have to get rid of the other one. So that makes you go through your to be read pile and your older books as well and decide which ones you're going to delete. And the other way you can do it um is one day a week you can have is your to be read books pile only so for that one day all you can read is books that you haven't cracked open yet for whatever reason and they've disappeared down under the horizon or you could do a whole two weeks or a whole month or something like that it's it sort of depends on i guess how many books you've got stuffed in there <laughs> 
and uh, how much you want to clean them up. So there's lots of different ways that you can make a game of it and get through your to be red pile. Um, I'm sure that you guys have probably got your own methods. So if you think you've got a really good way for whittling down the pile, um, put it in comments and let over and share it with everyone so that they can see it too. So, okay, um, any questions, comments, observations? Let me know. Um, Mary, love the hair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I won't bore everyone with the, the long explanation that I gave at the beginning of the video, Mary, but you will see it in replay. Um, yeah, it's kind of scary. I took a foot off. <laughs> it's still, it's longer at the back still. Um, and here is an opportunity. There is five people according to the count. There's five people in the chat at the moment. Have you got any books that you think are brilliant and you want to share? Because you can share them with each other, um, especially if you use the, uh, the borrow and lend facility on the Kindles. Um, and most people do seem to have Kindles. So if you've got a book you want to share, um, maybe throw the title in um, and see if anyone wants to pick it up. Uh, this is an opportunity for you guys to talk to each other and, and sort out um, borrowing books. Um, the, you could also, if you want to, and this is purely voluntary, but it's just a thought, if you've got a print book that you would be willing to post to someone, um, you can maybe swap print books. So... It doesn't, they don't necessarily have to send one back to you or they could just post the book back to you when they're done. Um, but just think, if you get them to autograph the inside of the book and then you keep borrowing the book, lending the book out, you end up with uh, a long list of people in far-flung places across the world that have read your book, that actual print copy. It's kind of a cool idea. There's uh, So let me just deal with comments here for a quick Janita, I'm terrible in that I use my reading list on Amazon as a placeholder so I can find books I'm interested in but could not immediately buy, so don't like deleting them. I do sometimes go through the list and separate them, creating smaller, newer lists. I may delete a few if they no longer grab me with the blurb. So you're organising them on your reader, is that what you're doing, Janita? Um, I find actually that the Amazon Kindle apps and devices are not terribly good for sorting. Um, I actually prefer using um, Calibra, the ebook management software, to sort on my hard drive and then I put the books onto my reader that I want to read and I can delete them off there once I'm done too, which uh, is the way I do it. So. Um, Janita, again, I do go through my Goodreads list and prune for the reading challenge each year. Yes, Goodreads is another way that a lot of people keep their books organised. Um, there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. Some people use Goodreads. I actually don't really like the public, uh, the, the way your lists and, and your bookshelves are all public. So I don't use Goodreads for that, for that reason. I use uh, Calibre instead. Janita, oh my god, Janita has over 4,000 books on her Kindle, <laughs> holy hell, how do you organize those, my goodness me, um, I guess yes, you, you're using Amazon and you're using Goodreads as you've already said, on the Amazon, on the Amazon list, not actually on Kindle because too many, um, okay, um, maybe I'm not quite sure what you mean by the Amazon list. Do you mean your listing of electronic content on your Amazon account or is there something else that you're using instead? And Nicole has over 4,000 books on her Kindle too. Wow, you guys are scary. <laughs> um, how do you make sure that you don't miss anything? How do you get down through your to be read piles when you've got so many books? Uh, do you tag them? Do you sort them? Let us know. So, 
Any more questions? Any more comments? Um, 4,000 books. Holy cow. <laughs> That's amazing. I thought I was bad. Although, I mean, all my books are on my hard drive and I only have a few on, on the reader. But uh, I suspect, I don't think I've got 4,000. And I'm, I've been a fairly um, relentless collector for quite a few years. So. And Janita is laughing. I just read what I feel like or sometimes some reminds me about a book. Amazon. Oh, oh, I see. You're talking about the wish list. Yes, Janita is talking about, I'm pretty sure she's talking about the, the wish list. So, and Mary has got 3,000 on Amazon. <laughs> few hundred on Nook, a few hundred more on Google, and of course all the hardback and paperback books I own and continue to buy. Whew, you guys are making me feel a bit weak need here. I may have to sit down again. <laughs> so, I mean, aren't you afraid that you, the, these books that you buy at the time and think are going to be absolutely wonderful, aren't you afraid they're just going to disappear down the bottom of your reader and you'll never see them again? Um, that's the thing that bothers me I, is that once they disappear, there's no way to remember they're there unless you, you know, con continuously scroll through all the old stuff. Um, because the sorting and tagging functions on Kindle is somewhat limited, actually make that really limited, um, you, I'm, you're always in danger of losing books that way. So I find I get very obsessive about making sure that the to be read pile is, is cleaned out pretty regularly. Uh, Janita, yes, wish list. Forgot that's what it's called. Okay, so you're using the wish list as a way to stay organized because, yes, the Amazon wish lists you can break up into to separate lists. So, Karen, I buy when I'm ready to read. I'm a speed reader and go through one book sometimes within a day. Karen, yes, um, there are a lot of people like you that just can plow through the books. That's great. Um, <laughs> I wish I could do that. I just, I don't have the time. So, and I end up uh, doing a lot of reading of my old books just so I can make sure that I'm keeping all the storylines straight when I write the next ones. And Janita, I make a point to read my Kindle Unlimited books because if I don't read it, the authors don't get paid, so I'll work them into my reading time. Yes, and that's, yes, if you're in Kindle Unlimited, that is something is that you need. The other thing is too, I think with Kindle Unlimited, I'm not a member, um, but I'm pretty sure you can only have 10 books checked out at a time. And if you want to get another one after that, you have to give one of the other ones back. So that's another reason to get through your Kindle Unlimited books too, is, is uh, so that you can, you've actually got space to get new ones. Mary, most of the books on the readers are free, so don't worry too much. I focus more on the purchase books and whatever I'm reading for ARCs. Okay, so yes, you've got priorities as well too. So, Janita, yes, 10 at a time for Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that's that's a self-limiting factor right there. And that's sort of what I was saying. Um, you, you could do the, the one in, one out rule for all your other titles as well. If you bring one in, you have to get rid of another one in some way or another so okay comments have slowed down a bit so um we should maybe let me see it's uh 239 here that's 39 minutes i've been on that's uh that's a nice round one um again uh, Nicole, okay, Nicole, I do think Amazon deletes books off the cloud because I feel I've bought certain books twice. Um, Nicole, just if, you, if you're certain of that, one of the ways that you can double check is to go in and check your previous orders and receipts, which is uh, under my accounts in Amazon. They've got a complete history there of everything you've ever bought from them. So if you feel like you've purchased a book twice, you can actually go in and confirm that. Um, I'd be interested to see if they do that. It's one of the reasons that I don't keep, um, I don't rely on the Amazon's backup cloud server. I actually keep everything on my hard drive and that is backed up onto my own cloud backup service. 
So uh, I keep them out of the Amazon environment, even though I buy books there. I also buy books in a lot of different places too. So that's another good reason to keep everything on my hard drive so it's all centralized. Junita, um, I hit to 80 to over 100 books a year in my Goodreads challenge. The most I have read is 130. Good for you, Janita. That's good. Yeah, Goodreads is, is good for the, the challenges and stuff like that too. Lots of bubbles just went up. I'm not sure what that was about, but thank you. <laughs> um, Mary, bought one of Tracy's twice and it isn't even out yet. Oh, my goodness. Did you? Let me know because I can give you a refund on that one. I uh, When I first started selling books direct from my site, there was no way for anyone to, to remember unless they just happened to check their orders. And that is a point. You can always go into your account on my site and have a look at past orders if you're always unsure. Um, there is a my account setting at the top in the menu and it will give you a complete history of books that you've bought from me. But because I had a few people saying, hey, I just bought a book for the second time, um, I have installed a little subroutine in there that will put a message, a status message on the top of your page telling you if you've bought that book before. Um, it sort of works like Amazon, but it's not the same big flashing red uh, status mark that they do, status bar I should say, that they put up there. It's just It just is a little piece of text that says, no, you've already bought this one, but it won't stop you from buying it. Uh, so you still do have to watch out for that one. Um, okay, so uh, I we've gone through ways to whittle your to be read pile um, and of course there is the question so feel free to if you have a book that you want to share if you have a print book that you would like to get um, postmarks from across the world offer it up in comments if you have an electronic book that you want to share put that in comments if you have an opinion about whether we should cut this back to once every two weeks, also put a comment. Um, and if you're watching this on replay, also feel free to comment, um, particularly if you can pull up someone's name, if you want to talk to them directly, that will notify them in their email that you have left a comment for them. So you can always do that in the replay after this live session has finished. Um, Mary, uh, War Duke of Britain, bought it a second time even after writing out the list of your books I purchased. The little notice didn't pop up for it. Okay, Mary, I will have a look. I will go in and have a look um, for that order and um, I will refund it if there is a second one there. Um, the other thing that I'm going to change in that regard too is I'm now going to send out uh, notices for pre-orders saying you have pre-ordered this which will let people load it into their reading devices and their place markers so they'll know that it's on pre-order and it will be coming out soon. So, All right, no more comments, no more questions. Um, in that case, I think we'll wrap up for today. Thank you all very much for turning up. Um, I hope you're all staying warm. And uh, I will see you either next week or in two weeks' time. And I'll go through, if you've, if you've got comments about that that you don't want to put in comments, you can always email me. Um, but I will have a read through, see what everyone thinks. And I will put a notice out via email just to let everyone know when the next session is coming up, either next week or in two weeks' time, depending on how everyone feels about that one. And if you like doing it weekly, you're perfectly entitled to say, I prefer to stay on a weekly basis. So let me know. And other than that, um, all cool. Yes, Karen, of course, all cool. February is the hottest month in the year in uh, Western Australia where I grew up. And my birthday, which is in February, has been the hottest day of the year um, at least four or five times in my lifetime. Um, probably more often than that, but I haven't been there for 20 years to actually notice. So now it's the coldest day of the year. <laughs> Okay, until next week or in two weeks' time, I will see you and...
enjoy your reading, especially getting down to the bottom of your tube, your red path. Have fun. Bye.